many moons ago. Um, I've been in the IT industry for about uh, 25 years. At first I actually thought I wanted to be an automotive mechanic. I, I realized that hey you know I, I, you know I love working on cars but I'm not gonna be able to make a, a career out of it because I don't you know want to invest my my, uh, my life into that so and and then uh, you know just be struggling to get by so I basically made cars a hobby and I started looking for other things to tinker with and I got interested in computers I got a job at a call center doing tech support for Dell in the late 90s. When I got the job doing the call support, I basically doubled my, my salary. I noticed that there was a lot of job postings. Hey, if you have the A+, you can you know, almost double the salary again. Uh, so I got the CompTIA A plus certification and then that immediately opened up a door for me to get into uh, Hewlett Packard. So I got into Hewlett Packard uh, doing laptop repair and pretty quickly I realized that hey, you know, I can only switch out the hardware and these things so many times. I didn't feel like, you know, I was really learning anything more. So I continued to pursue other certifications. At the time I pursued like the Microsoft Certified Professional. Right about the time I, I got that certification, there was a job in the, uh, in the help desk at HP. So it was going to be desk site support for the uh, HP employees. And so I got that job and I was just like a level one support, desk site support. Um, but the, the HP facility that I worked at, they actually developed the Unix systems. They were the hardware engineers there and so there was a lot of Unix systems too. Eventually there was a, an opening in the, in the Unix team uh, that I wasn't qualified for. I didn't expect to, to get the position but it was offered to me. Um, and and I, I took that with an HP and then I, I worked at HP for, uh, for 10 years. I became a, a Unix subject matter expert for the HP Unix systems and it was fascinating to me. I was passionate about it, constantly learning, like drinking through a fire hose. Like many people that come through these programs will understand. One thing that I did along the way is I continued to, to learn and to engage. I, learned, I became a subject matter expert for blade servers and I got VMware certified and I eventually got project management certified and, and I just it was constant, constant learning and I started my own business and uh, right now I have a, a small managed service provider company and our niche has kind of become supporting dental offices. So I've been doing that since 2011 but in 2014 I started teaching for Colin College um, I started teaching the, uh, the, the, the CompTIA A+, Net+, Security+, Plus classes for them and I found that like instructing, you know, being an instructor, teaching is my passion. Typically the, the classes that, that I teach will go, we'll have some kind of lecture, we'll break into to groups, you know, we work through the, the labs and, and we have, you know, one person always sharing their screen and, uh, and, and it just it creates the, the collaboration within the students. You know, we'll have, we'll have death by PowerPoint for a few hours. <laughs> and I encourage electronic notes as we're going through and I'll point out things for the exam, take screenshots of and I'll talk about it and I'll, I'll give my personal experiences and stories and, uh, but you know, it, it, I try to keep it exciting. Uh, but then something else that seems to be really working well for us, is one of the things that I found really effective in helping to uh, increase that rate of uh, taking the exams is, is we break into teams uh, and, and then we have a competition. We'll, we'll pull up the test engine, whether it's the CompTIA test engine or the Boston. But so, so we'll go through, we break into teams and, you know, and we'll have what the person, you know, we'll, we'll round drop it and, you know, team one, first person reads a question, they discuss it openly in front of everybody, right? And then so, the, and, and it's always open book, right? Because it comes back to these multiple touches. It's not like, how good can you remember 6,000 pages of information and recall it? It's not, it's, that's not the point of it. The point of it is, Okay, here's the question. You guys have books, you have Google, you have all these different resources become resourceful. So the team, they start talking, well, hey, I'll search up, I'll search up this answer and see what those terms mean, and I'll search up this one, and then they talk and they discuss it. Everyone gets to see that, they get the question right, they get the points, they get it wrong, we move to the next question, next team. And uh, and, and and that uh, that's been one of the things that that I uh, that we started doing, you know, probably within the last year, year and a half that that uh, that's really cool. We keep scores and you know maybe even get prize to to the, the winning team, right?
And that was one of the challenges going um, going into a, uh, a virtual environment. Told you know because I was teaching in person, <clears throat> and so it's easy to tell if someone wasn't engaged or if they're you know it's a it's a lot easier to get distracted when you're not uh, when you're not physically there. Um, so so yeah, one, I, you know I try to encourage the cameras on, putting the people into teams. I'll call on people during the lecture, you know, or or maybe I'll I'll, I'll ask a, a question. You know, what do you guys think? Uh, you know, would be a ramification if uh, we didn't do it this way, or you know, things like that. Um, but the, yeah, the main thing uh, that I found is the small group engagements. You know, three people kind of seems to be the sweet spot. Have one person always share their screen, and sometimes people will get ahead in the labs. Uh, you know, on the same team, and if they, you know, maybe someone misses a day or something like that. So what we usually do is we have the person that's furthest behind, not in a negative way, but we have them share their screen because the people that have already done that lab, you know, at least somebody's screen is up there and they're working through it. And if they come to a question, hey, what'd you guys do on this step? You know, did you have a problem? And it, it, again, it encourages the collaboration between the, the teammates. And sometimes they'll say, well, shoot, I don't really know what that was, or I got stuck on it or skipped over it. Hey, ping the instructor. Once we get the teams kind of, people get the flow of it and kind of get the feel of it, you know, you can see that com camaraderie between the teams build and they build this camaraderie, you know, and then it's, you know, going to the labs and they're, they're much more engaged with each other and, and things like that. So probably the biggest challenge uh, that I see to the students is they don't, you know, it's hard to set the expectation about the volume of information and the uh, how much it is. Um, sometimes they, they uh, will feel like they're just overwhelmed, and uh, and and that's where I'll try to take a step back. Hey, take a deep breath. Nobody learns this stuff the first time they see it. It's, you know, nobody learns it. You're gonna see it the first time. We're gonna need multiple touch points. If you're feeling overwhelmed, just just throttle it in. Even if you, you just kind of zone out. I'm not, you know, just hearing the language because we're gonna come back in and we're gonna touch it. You're gonna touch it in the, the, the server plus and then again in the net plus and then in the security plus and then the pen test plus. We're, you know, you're gonna have these multiple touches and then in the games and then in the labs and, and, it, and it may seem like too much. And, and one of the other challenges that uh, the students, you know, convey to me, you know, at first is when they start doing the labs. It's like, oh my God, you know, what are all these commands? These PowerShell commands are like three lines long. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just typing in commands. And then one of the things that I say is, um, hey, you know, to get through the labs, they're going to give you a lot of these commands that you have to type and you may not know exactly what they are. There's all these switches and options and, and arguments and things in the command and you don't quite understand what you're doing, but that's okay, right? Just type them in, you know, just, just type the PowerShell commands. It'll eventually start to make sense because a lot of people will get frustrated that they feel like, ah, you know, I'm doing all this stuff and I have no idea what I'm even doing. And that's very, very common. When you're doing it, you're gonna start to build familiarity with it. Even if you don't memorize what you're doing, you're gonna say, hey, I noticed that every time I open PowerShell, these commands kind of seem similar. I don't know exactly what they're doing. And, but at, by the time you get to, you know, your, your second module, you're starting to say, oh, I, now I kind of get it. Take in all this volume of information. A lot of it's not just getting through the content, right? Because I don't know how many times if you're reading boring content, or you can only take in so much, and then you get bored, and the next thing you know, you read two or three pages of something, and you have no idea what you just read because you're at least I <laughs> daydreaming about something else. Um, but you know, one thing that recommendation is, hey, in, instead of uh, instead of watching, you know, binging on you know, some drama Netflix series, you know, watch something like The Great Hack or the, the, the Stuxnet documentary or listen to things like Darknet Diary. Listen to audiobooks that are related to the industry. And even if they're not exactly, you know, just technical, 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 just exposing yourself to this, just hearing the language, you know, and then you're gonna say, oh, that's what they were talking about. Or we, we, we heard this acronym in class and the thing that I find is one of the more beneficial things is you try to incorporate this industry into other aspects of your life. Trying to, to always be communicating, learning. There's a lot of meetup groups and now that those are starting to meet back up after 
after COVID, right? There's a lot of these these groups and people get together and you go you go to these places with other people uh, that are also passionate, interested in it. And the next thing you know, you're going to be looking forward to going to these things and learning these things and talking to these people and the language and you're going to just start picking it up because you should be doing something or you'll be benefiting the most by doing things that that are somehow related. And the, the good thing about technology and security and all this is everything uses technology now. So, so if you just don't understand everything to the fullest degree, just catch what you can and keep doing it because again, it's gonna come back to these multiple touch points. It makes me passionate to see other people getting interested and passionate about it. So teaching is my, is my passion I, I found and, and I love you know, engaging with people and, and helping them learn and, and, uh, and shoot, learning from them. I mean, every class that I start, I say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna learn something from you guys. You, I, I'm gonna learn something from you guys because you know some things that I don't know. And, uh, and I'm gonna try to, to get you as much, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I'm gonna try to help you as much as possible, but you're also gonna help me and, and, and to, to, to learn things as well. And, and it's, it's, always, it's always true. So, you know, I like engaging, I like helping people, and, and it makes me excited to see them get excited. You know, that's, that's probably the, the main thing that I enjoy. Just to, I don't know what it is, but when I get, you know, when, when I get in front of a class, I, uh, and especially when, when people are eager to learn, and it's very, you know, it's rewarding and more of the cliche things, but you know, I've seen a lot of successes from my students that have, you know, taken the class and eventually passed the test, and you know, again, it's, it's working with the, it's working with the students and uh, and seeing people get passionate about it. That's what it boils down to. Well, it's always uh, it's always awesome when the uh, when the when the student becomes the master, <laughs> right? So I had a, I had a uh, I had one student uh, come through Divergence here, and he had a developer's background, and he caught on really quickly. And as we you know worked you know through classes together, you know he would stay you know him and a couple other guys, we would stay after and we started messing around with these uh, these hack the box you know hack the box. Like some of these are really hard, and you have to spend hours and hours, and so. Um, so we started working, you know, we started working on these different uh, boxes and he took it to the next level. I mean, it was like each time I'd see him, he would have rooted, uh, you know, a couple more hack the box boxes and it's taken me like, you know, six hours to root one of them, you know, if I'm lucky kind of thing. And so I actually learned a lot from him. I mean, he taught me a lot because he had the development background and so he understood when it came down to you know putting in machine code and going to certain memory addresses and i really like to see you know the students level up like this and there's been other students that have just you know it, it's awesome to see them just take this momentum and and and, and skyrocket with it yeah for example i had uh, like my two best employees that just recently left um, on good terms you know they're great guys i'm super proud of them that's probably one of my proudest moments is uh, these guys, they, they came through one of my classes. Both of them were bartenders. They didn't really have much of a technical background, but they had an excellent um, customer service. But what I realized with these guys is they were very, uh, in my, they took my class and they were the first guys to jump up and want to learn something and to want to do the extracurricular things and, and, and just help out. So a lot of it was, um, you know, this passion. So these guys ended up working for me um, and they worked for me for, for three years. And, uh, and now they went off and they're making money somewhere that's you know two or three times as much as you know I was able to afford to pay them, but they built and they, they stayed with it. And it was great to see them grow from you know bartenders that didn't have much of a future. And now um, you know their resignation letters you know basically made me tear up. And that was my proud moment, probably. Do what you love and you love what you do, right? So, so find something that you, within the, the spectrum of technology that really fascinates you. Maybe it's Internet of Things devices. Find what it is that you like and you know, put a little extra focus on it. You know, instead of, you know, find the thing that you, you still learn, you know, try to learn it all, but in the extracurricular activities that we talked about, right? Maybe it has something to do with that, that niche or that thing that really spurs your interest, right? Because again, it's all technology. It's all going to have stuff that's related. So, 
Um, that would be one thing. Don't give up. If you feel overwhelmed, know that um, you know, it's normal. It's normal for this industry. Get used to being uncomfortable. Get used to not knowing everything. You know, get used to building relationships. Um, find a, you know, if, if you get a job, a junior sysadmin or something like that, you know, find somebody on the tier two team. Take them out to lunch. Pick their brain. You know, this kind of stuff. You know, just find mentors. There's people out there. If you, if, if, if you are actually engaged and act and, and, and uh, convey that you know, you are genuinely interested in things, people are going to be dying to, to help you. I mean, they're, they, because they get passionate like I do when I teach, because they're going to see you learning and they get all excited. Uh, in this industry, the really nice thing is there's a lot of, there's a lot of people in the industry that are, that are excited about it, as, as excited as I am, that are wanting to help you if you're genuinely, uh, you know, uh, passionate or, you know, show interest in it. So.